On this episode of China Uncensored, China's perfectly reasonable air defense zone. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Ladies and gentlemen, and Wu Maos, I have a very important announcement to make. During my scholarly research that I love to do so much, I came across a map that shows that the eastern portion of Canada clearly belongs to me. This map was made 500 years ago, and its authenticity is beyond questionable. Questioning. I meant to say questioning. This has been a part of my sacred territory since ancient times. That's why, as of 10 o'clock local time, 2 o'clock GMT, I'm establishing an air defense identification zone over the region. Any aircraft entering my airspace without properly identifying itself will be shot down. And let me just get ahead of my critics out there. The sudden appearance of this map has nothing to do with recently discovered untapped reserves of poutine in Quebec. That's why I'm taking China's side on their air defense identification zone that they just put up around a huge chunk of the East China Sea. But just because it's a little close to South Korea and Japan, the China haters out there are all up in arms. Japan is mad because the ADIZ just happens to include the Diaoyu Islands, islands Japan erroneously calls the Senkaku Islands and claims as their own. Let me tell you, that sounds like Senkaka to me. Why? Because there's an old map from the Ming Dynasty that says they were a part of China. And everyone knows you have to listen to what old maps say. Not that map! Now, Japan and the U.S. are ganging up on China, claiming it has altered the regional status quo. But an editorial by the People's Daily says that it's Japan that altered the regional status quo, and that the Diaoyu Islands have been a part of China's sacred territory since ancient times, a claim supported by historical facts and jurisprudential evidence. Sorry, Japan. Vague Ming Dynasty maps trump that World War II treaty you had with the U.S. According to the treaty, the string of islands, which are 250 miles west of Okinawa, are under Japan's control. But according to Taiwan, the islands, only 100 miles away, belong to them. And China agrees, but says Taiwan belongs to them. China announced the creation of the Air Defense Identification Zone on November 23rd, and shortly after posted the six rules of the ADIZ. Rule number one of the Air Defense Identification Zone, you do not talk about the rules of the Air Defense Identification Zone. Rule number two, aircraft flying in the East China Sea Air Defense Identification Zone must abide by these rules. Rule number three is the Air Force will adopt defensive emergency measures if you don't follow the rules. So watch out, Japan. Your days are numbered. What? I meant with a calendar. See, that wasn't a threat. No one wants war. Seriously, though, don't fly into Chinese airspace. Now, as I said in a recent episode, China loves using hostile foreign forces as a kind of diversionary tactic whenever things start to heat up politically inside the country. The problem is, Japan is currently controlled by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the Liberal Democratic Party, and they're pretty nationalistic. In fact, just a few weeks before China created this new national airspace and threatened to shoot down whoever doesn't like it, Abe said Japan would do the same thing for anything entering Japanese airspace. Though that was also just a few weeks after a Chinese bomber and then a drone flew close to Okinawa, the Japanese island closest to the Diaokaku Islands, as I will now be calling them. So basically, this has become an issue of nationalistic pride for both China and Japan, and neither side is going to back down. At the beginning of the year, China even issued a directive to the People's Liberation Army to start preparing for war over the island. However, if war ever did break out, the U.S. signed a treaty with Japan in 1952 that they would come to Japan's aid. And that could mean Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia, and Taiwan, all U.S. allies and all countries that have been bullied by China for their territory might also get involved. But then China has Laos, Cambodia, Burma, and of course the nuclear regime with the oh-so-handsome leader, North Korea. Of course, war would be a disaster for everyone, but it's a dangerous game. While fanning the flames of nationalism can make some Chinese people forget the grievances they have with the party, neither China nor Japan can back down. So China pushes, Japan retaliates, and China pushes even harder. How long until things go too far? Well, considering that propaganda has even penetrated the flower pot market, I'd say we're almost there. So what is the big deal about these islands? They're small, uninhabited. The only thing they have going for them is that they might sit on a large reserve of oil and natural gas. Oh.